Okay, it's Matt Thomas here, King Unique. What we're going to do now is run through a quick overview of the whole instrument. So I'm going to take you through what all the various panels are about, what the architecture of the synth is. Once we've done that, we'll go through them all one at a time and see how it all fits together. Before I go into that, a quick disclaimer. Synclavier V is how I pronounce it. I've heard Synclavier pronounced as Synclavier, Synclavier. Apparently the guys who uh, invented it like to call it the Synclavier. This is one of those uh, machines that everybody's got a different way of saying. Uh, I was listening in French lessons, so I'm going with Synclavier V. But uh, yeah, you can not be such a dick. But your choice, anyway, Synclavier V is what it's going to be for this lesson, but uh, you can call it the Sancluver, I don't really, uh, I don't mind. What we have here is the timbre panel. Now straight away you're going, timbre panel? That sounds brilliant, what does that mean? Okay, so let's compare this to uh, a bog standard uh, analog synth like a Mini Moog, where you have oscillators, and all those oscillators combined, it's three on a Mini Moog, make up a voice. On the synclavier, you have timbre is the same as a voice. Okay, so we've got timbre here. All the settings on this panel affect the whole timbre or the whole voice. Okay, now if I press this, we get the partials panel. Okay, it says here partial select, and any one of these buttons selects a different partial. Now, where on a say a Moog, you have three oscillators. On the synclavier V, you've got 12 partials. Now, on the original machine, you had four, and four was kind of plenty, but Arturia have just sort of thought, well, you know what? We've got CPUs, and we've got unlimited imaginations, so if you need 12, there's 12. And that can come in handy if you're trying to make some really complex, evolving sequence. You may actually get up to 12, who knows? But don't feel like that's what you're meant to be doing. The uh, original Synclavia was used on all these amazing records by all these amazing people with just four partials, and they never had a problem, per se. So we've got a bunch of partials, but we only need to use maybe one. You know, some great sounds we're going to be using just one. And for a lot of this tutorial, we'll work with just one partial so you can hear what's going on. But as I say, we'll by the end, we'll start layering up a few and see what's happening. So that's the timbre panel. That's the partial panel. Uh, we can probably do that. You're thinking, OK, you know, I don't know what all this fuss about it being a scary synth is about. Well, we've got the SCR and now we've got our own little VT100 display. And we've got this to deal with as well. Okay, so now we've got more than we were bargaining for. But here's the good news. This page, Engine, okay, Engine has stuff that is not on the keyboard. Okay, if we could flick back, very, very little of the Engine uh, parameters are up here. Okay, so you're going to be going to the SCR to do the Engine. And the Engine essentially is your waveforms, how they modulate each other, and this uh, timbre frame I was telling you about, the sort of evolution from one setting to another. That's all done here. So this is one we're going to spend some time on. Now this one, Mixer, there's your 12 partials and there's volume, pan, tuning, transpose, octave. But hang on, if I flick back to here, there's your partial selector and there's volume, pan, octave, transpose, tuning. So what we're doing with the SCR screen, this, uh, this little copy of the VT100, is we're duplicating in the sort of computer display a lot of the stuff from the keyboard. And the same is true when I go to ENVs and LFOs. We've got an amplitude envelope, a harmonic envelope, which I'll explain later, a vibrato and a stereo controller, they're sort of LFOs. And if I go back to screen, hey presto, amplitude envelope, harmonic envelope, vibrato and stereo LFOs. So what we're getting is a lot of duplication straight away. When you get to here, key dynamics, this one is actually separate just to the SCR. This lets you control how different partials respond to velocity, uh, the pitch of the note you're playing in terms of whether they're louder or softer at that point, and it lets you uh, set up mod wheel effects. Then we have a mod matrix, a mod matrix which if you've been following any of these Arturia courses I've been doing, we tend to see something like this in each one of the Arturia instruments. This is where typically you're doing things that weren't actually part of the original synth. We can start routing say, an LFO from one partial to another and all these sort of things. Now, that doesn't go on in the original. So here is where, if the actual architecture of the synclavier is letting you down and you think, ah, I just need to bring like a sawtooth waveform in onto this pitch, but I've, I've used the other, ah, damn, this is where you can get out of jail free. Okay, this is where you wiggle around and go, ah, but I'll nick that one because that partial's not doing anything and I'll nick that LFO and stick it on, you know, whatever here. Okay, so last one is FX and Master. 
Again, if you've been following these Archeria tutorials, you'll know that we tend to have a little sort of multi-effects unit, and here is no exception. Pick up to three uh, chained effects. On this side of the screen, we can turn off the animations. You know, when I press, boom, that whiz, can turn that off if you want. Timbre normalize to make sure that as you're adding more partials, you don't overload the output. If you put that on, it always kind of levels out to zero. A noise floor, which copies how much hiss there was in the original machine. Oversampling bit depth. Last thing, down here, scale adjustments lets you adjust how the pitch of the keyboard responds, whether it's in the standard tuning that we use, like a semitone per note, or whether you get a whole tone per note or a quarter tone. That's done with the octave ratio. And here you can actually detune individual notes in the scale. Pitch bend range adjuster. And well, that's it. We've gone through the whole thing. There's absolutely nothing scary there. And there isn't, but it is a lot of new ideas to get your head around. You may have noticed, if you're a particularly eagle-eyed, there's no filters. Not one. There's no lows, no highs, no bands, nothing. This synth does not use filtering. Which is interesting, because Arturia do tend to sort of beef up the missing features. But with the Synclavia, they've not done that. So it's making us have to kind of work in the sort of Synclavia's ballpark, rather than just the generic uh, synth. Well, it's got a new waveform way, but it'll get to a filter soon, so we're fine. Nope. We're going to have to actually get our heads into the Synclavia way of working. And once we've got our mind kind of clear on the partials, a bit making up a timbre, and uh, those partials can be put along a timeline and evolve from one to another, which is going to be fiddly. Once we start to get our heads around this, we'll be fine. Oh, and a final thing before we start to actually look at this in detail is here where we've got the, the carrier and the modulator waveform um, uh, additive sections. There's also this little tab, sample, and here we can load up samples instead of having additive waveforms as our basic sound. In just one partial, we could do that in every single partial, could have a different sound in. So we will now slow right down, head back to the first screen, and think about the best way to unpick this synthesizer. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.